a lot of people know about the story of Aldine, how grateful we are to Aldine and Knox and the whole team of people for, you know, believing in us and letting us do what we do. Um, but in between me playing with Pam Tillis and you guys playing with the Tim Rushlow solo career and Jason, so between Pam Tillis, Tim Rushlow solo career and Aldine, there was a band called Rushlow. <laughs> First thought, go. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointment. I'm gonna, I'm, okay, that's a great first thought. That's a great first thought. A lesson. Lesson in what happens when there's control issues and when you're not allowed to be yourself. It will never work. You are it's never worked. So profound today. It's never worked. <laughs> it will never work. It doesn't work till t it doesn't work at this moment. Well, it, it, and that if you really want to encapsulate it, that was it. It was it wasn't genuine. You know, we it's were too contrived. We were told to not be ourselves, really, or play like ourselves. And we went to do our live shows. It was great. It was rock and roll. There was it was we had great audiences. But then we got into cut a record, and you know we were just cutting stuff a we weren't used to, and b playing like we wouldn't it was play. Way, way, way polished, and you were put inside a box. We were, I remember it was a big box. Our manager, six guys. manager slash co-producer. It's a lot of guys in the band. Six guys. I was I was playing, and he goes. Man, play something Glenn Worf would play. And I said, well, I'm not Glenn Worf. You know, so probably not gonna, that's not gonna work out well for me. Glenn Worf. Yes, yeah, right. Glenn uh, amazing Worf. Player. Amazing player. But, but, I mean, but it's not me. I don't, he didn't do what I do, I, do, I don't do what he did. And that's great. But and, it was just a, really, the mentality, you gotta remember what this was, the mentality of it. Yeah, and the, this was, this was 2002, still, right? This and 2002, the moral of it yeah. is that, or the, I guess the end result is, and I mean, we talk about this a lot, and it's not trying to throw shade or anything, but the album ended up sounding... Ridiculous. Well, just like anything else. There was no, <laughs> there was nothing unique about it. I mean, we did play our it's very soft. Within the box, we played our heart out. That's you fine. Know. We, gave, we gave our... But there just wasn't anything unique about it. We were being produced record. wrong, and we gave the producer everything he wanted. And, we, and we've worked with that producer since then. He's a great He's engineer. Great. Yep. Um, Jeff Balding killer engineer yeah. Yeah, killer producer but it was just too many different variables at the point and music was different and it was supposed to be slicker and we were not slick it was, it was aggressive and it, the songs we were playing okay. I felt weird playing the songs and well it, and then ironically or coincidentally enough you know when we cut Jason's record two years later or a year and a half later yeah, yeah. there's like, oh up. that's this cool new fresh sound we were, the sound we were oh. trying to be in the other group, <laughs> but but you know it's it's, it's okay. It, it is cool, Dennis, it, to be in a situation where ever ever since 2002, we have never had to copy another person's licks to go take on the road. Subscribe to the official Pick Rich's Brain podcast at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.